Thank you, Moran, for your introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Han Wu. I'm a faculty from the Department of Biological System Engineering at WSU. So my Jacati program uh, uh, project is uh, aromatic hydrocarbons that's for the aeration uh, biofuels. So I will first uh, introduce, uh, uh, briefly introduce uh, my uh, uh, group members. Uh, our process uh, that's a focus on the thermochemical conversions. Uh, you see here, I highlight several parts here, the pyrolysis, uh, the catalysis. Our products include uh, uh, oxygenated aromatic, we call the phenol, biophenols, and also aromatics, which can be used as the aviation fuel important components. So we use the carbon catalysis and also zeonide catalysis. Um, so my research group that uh, have a poster, uh, Dr. Lu Wang, is working on the catalysis on the jet fuels. Currently, uh, we have uh, three PhD students and uh, two master students uh, working in this area. So from their project title, you can see what's going on uh, of this, like uh, uh, Mr. Zhu is working on the catalysis using the carbon, using the carbon catalysis for the aromatic and uh, biofuel production. Uh, Xue Sun Zhang is working on the zeonet catalysis for the aromatics. Uh, and also we have uh, other students working on the, uh, some pretreatment, like how to separate the, uh, the bio oil into different parts and reduce the cooking. Um, other students like uh, Yu Peng and uh, Gai Yachi working, uh, working on the active carbon and working on the uh, thermal pretreatment to improve the biofuels uh, uh, quality. Uh, we have uh, uh, four PhD students and uh, one master student graduate in my group. Um, um, Chen Bu, the first st uh, student that's, uh, uh, is, he's working on the um, biophenols using the active carbon as a catalyst to convert the biomass uh, into the biophenols. Luan is working on the zeonite catalysis to convert to the uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. And So Jie is working on the carbon catalysis and also uh, biomass thermochemical uh, you know, pretreatment that we call the torrefaction as a way to uh, improve the fuel quality. Another student, uh, uh, Iwona, she was working on the, uh, how to separate the biomass into three different components. We know biomass have uh, hemicellulose, cellulose, and the lignin. You, you, uh, sometimes you, you can separate into different particles to different uh, pathways. And Jinya, uh, uh, she was working on the you know, technical economic analysis. So this project is uh, aromatics. You know, what's aromatics? We know aromatics is important component for every type of fuels. So from this table, you can see uh, Crude oil has 33 to 36 percent of the aromatics, and gasoline it can up to uh, you know 85 percent of the aromatics in, in the gasoline. Jet fuel have uh, aromatic can be up to 25 percent. So aromatic, you know, this is the most most desired products can increase uh, you know the energy content of the fuel and also uh, uh, reduce the tendency of the engine knock and the damage. Uh, is in, uh, one important aspect is uh, aromatic that's used in the jet fuel for the jet fuel engine system. It can cause you know some inesmer, some seals to expand it, uh, so that way that we can prevent the, the fuel leakage. So we did a literature review about the, what's the importance of the aromatic in the jet fuel. Uh, so I have some highlights here. You can see uh, one important thing is uh, prevent the fuel leaks and then increase the uh, fuel density. Uh, Anti-lock uh, properties, the highest volume energy density. That means if you can use some aromatic hydrocarbon in the fuels, you can have a longer distance of the travel. Uh, and also PL have a, have a test using the alternative fuels. They have to add the aromatics into the alternative fuels. Otherwise, the engine will not run smoothly. So they, they conclude that uh, aromatic is a must-have component in the jet fuel, alternative jet fuels. Uh, industry experience require the aromatic content from 8% to about uh, 25%. We also did a uh, uh, research research on the current issue of the converging from the biomass to the aromatics. You see here the table. Uh, the concentration of the aromatics in the uh, upgrade bio oil is, is not very high. You can see from 6% to about 37%. That means uh, uh, the aromatic hydrocarbons, but at the same time, there's a lot of chemicals inside of the aromatics, like uh, uh, some oxygenated uh, uh, organic acid, uh, aldehyde, uh, furan, furfur, those kind of compounds. You have to separate the aromatic out from these fuels uh, before you can use it. 
So uh, this project, they try to demonstrate the techno-economic feasibility to producing the high-value aromatic compounds from Washington State forest biomass. Our goal is try to develop a catalyst to convert the biomass. Uh, we use the carbon catalyst that's called the biomass-derived carbon catalyst to convert uh, the biomass into aromatics. So this is the dog fur. We know every kind type of the biomass, it has contains three important components. One is the seniors, hemiseniors, another one is the nignin. How to convert that different part into the aromatics? Uh, because the different pathway will apply to different components of the biomass. Like the seniors, hemiseniors, it go to the, uh, go to through the, you know, dehydration, depolymerization, or fragmentation, give you a fair few foreign compounds, and also some small molecules like uh, ethers, alcohol, ketones, those kind of compounds. And the nignin, it goes through the uh, depolymerization, uh, can generate some alcohol compounds. For this type of compound, it has a two, uh, and, you know, function groups like hydroxyl, methoxide uh, function groups. So you, if you want to generate oxygen-free aromatics, you have to remove those kind of function groups. Uh, so our way is using the carbon catalyst. We first use the active carbon catalyst because active carbon has a very high surface area, have some type of function group inside and we can use uh, for the catalysis process. Uh, we use uh, hemicellulose, cellulose, and lignin. Ac um, actually, we, we use a separate one as a model compound, and also use uh, you know, combine uh, just the biomass. We can convert this kind of uh, different compounds uh, into um, you know oxygenated uh, aromatics. We call the phenol and the gargos. Uh, we have many papers published in this area. So you can, if you use a carbon catalyst, that's a coal-based catalyst, uh, you can generate more than 75% of the uh, aromatics. That's oxygenated aromatics. So this is a, uh, um, this is a carbon catalyst process. You get a phenol, a lot of phenol compounds. I know phenol compounds is a very important and high-value chemicals that can be used for the reason for the polymer, for the plastic, uh, you know, production that can be used for the uh, aerospace, uh, you know, uh, con construction material. And um, because, you know, we want to get the oxygen-free aromatics, so we need a further step. So we, we try to develop a biomass-derived uh, carbon catalyst. We use the corn stover as, uh, as the biomass starting point. So this, uh, in this corn stover, we, we have a process called the microwave carbonization process. We can generate a function group. We can also control uh, the, uh, you know, the surface area and also the microstructure of, the, uh, of this uh, um, catalyst. We have a lot of function groups can be generated, like carboxyl and carbonyl function groups. Those kind of function groups, we, we prove that's important for the converting uh, from the biomass to the aromatics. So this is the uh, uh, kind of results we, we get. Uh, from the top uh, figure, you can see that uh, the biomass, uh, you know, we use the dog fur and the uh, carbon catalyst that's derived from the uh, corn stover uh, um, type of the biomass. So you can have uh, uh, more than 40% of the uh, hydrocarbon. That's the oxygen-free uh, compounds. You also have a uh, um, <coughs> phenol compound. It's just have one uh, hydroxyl function groups uh, inside of that. So. Uh, you put them together, it's more than 85% of the oxygen aromatics. Uh, we have a further step using the zeonide catalyst uh, to try to, you know, to remove all the oxygen out um, uh, from the uh, from these, uh, you know, uh, products. We, we get a very good results. We can have uh, more than 95% of the aromatics uh, without any oxygen inside. So th those kind of things can be directly used as a fuse um, uh, for the uh, aviation jet fuse. So we found that uh, uh, there is a mechanism how to convert the different part uh, of, uh, of the biomass, like the hemicellular, seniors, and the lignin, uh, to the aromatics. So our process, because the carbon catalyst, it has a function groups. So these function groups uh, can catalyze some reactions, like carbon water reaction, uh, water gas, uh, gas shift reaction, and also methane reforming. So we have a lot of hydrogen that's generated during the process. We call it, this is the in situ hydrogen generation, which hydrotreat the, the biomass. The, um, you know, the pyrolysis bio, that volatiles. So then we can use this uh, in situ generated hydrogen uh, to remove the, some oxygen compound from the biomass. So finally we get uh, the aromatics, uh, which is oxygen free. So we have one pattern that's, uh, uh, that's filed uh, for this process, that's in 2014. Right now, uh, 
you know, Dr. Bren and Kraft from the office, uh, WSU Office of Commercialization, uh, leading a group that's working on this, uh, this process, try to develop some business model, develop some business case, and also uh, there is a group of students from UW at, uh, um, I think, uh, and Ken, Meyer, Ken Meyer's class, that's commercialization class, uh, that, gr that group of students is working on trying to develop a uh, you know, business case for this process. Um, so I, I'd like to thank uh, you know, um, you know, the, the Jack Hattie, uh, because the funding that's provided by Jack Hattie, so we get a very good results. And um, our, you know, our student is very creative and original, so they work very hard to get a lot of good results coming out. And also I'd like to thank my collaborators from the, my industry partner and also other um, you know, <coughs> partners. Uh, this project actually is leveraged by other uh, you know, projects that's funded by the USDA, DOE, Sungrant, and, uh, and the WSU. Thank you very much for your attention.